Oops. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to my channel. I do drone and tech reviews. No surprise here, I crashed my Tiny Hawk 2 race and I needed to do some repairs. If you do break one of your motors, here's how to replace it. And then upgrades that you should consider. As a full disclaimer, I was not sponsored by any of the products today. Everything was purchased. If you guys already haven't done so, please click on the subscribe button below. So what broke from this thing is a C-clip. The C-clip holds the, uh, the bell housing in place and that's what popped off. I couldn't find it anywhere. The next logical thing was to just replace the motor. Make sure you pick up the right motor. This is the Emax 1103 7500 kV motor. I ordered it through Race Day Quad. Yeah, let's just get down to the nitty gritty. All right, so what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna unscrew this. Hopefully keep track of what goes where. I won't have to reverse the polarity or anything like that. I'll move this motor here. All right, these are 4.5 hex screws here. Smells like there was some Loctite on there. Oh my gosh. I don't want to touch the body. Oh, one, two, three. Clean that up just a little bit. This might, this new one might be slightly longer. So then this weld in directly one, two, and three like this without any changes. And then I'm gonna just reattach it. These are really small. I'm just gonna try my best. So flux makes it a little bit easier to solder stuff. A little goes a long way. We're gonna pre-tin the wire. So basically that means we're gonna put solder on each one of these. I have my helping hands touch the wire to make sure that there's some solder on it. That's one, that's two, there we go. Those are pre-tinned. You know, I'm gonna need tweezers. That's one. It's two, three. And then also clean up in between. Line the holes up. This definitely helps if you have ma these uh, magnetic tips. All right, these are all bolted up. I'm gonna remove the screws. I should've done this from the beginning. Let's spin the prop. So this is the one I wanna see. So this has to go clockwise. This has to go like this. Got my remote here. Got everything hooked up. So now let us see if this fires up. All right, mission success. This spins inwards. Let's put the props back on, hopefully in the right order. Everything is nice and tight. They all feel roughly the same. So now let's do a little quick test flight in the house. All righty, so. Oops. There's some vibrations, but I'm not too worried. And so the motors I recommend upgrading to is the Geelang 1202 8700 kV motors. These are from a Geelang 85X HD, which I crashed, and I'm gonna be telling a whole story about that down the line. There is a caveat with Emacs motors. The motor mounts are proprietary. These aren't a direct bolt-on. These Geelangs same with these spacers here, but you'll need slightly larger screws. They'll line up the motors in place. Luckily, these came with the drone that I crashed. Soldering it was the same as the stock configuration. So the second upgrade you can do is actually putting an HD camera on there. As you know, this isn't a freestyle platform, so you gotta be creative. What I went with is the Insta360 GO 2. And I went with this mount here. I recommend if you do design mounts, especially with the Insta360 GO, you kind of go with this encapsulating design. Not only will it protect the lens and the camera, it's a little bit more, I guess, secure in place. I actually got the drone mount custom made from Fly High. I do recommend is slightly larger screws. The Emacs Tiny Hawk actually comes with some spare screws which I use which are actually long enough. Also these rubber grommets that to kind of secure everything in place. All right so I got my, all my stuff. I got my Emacs, my go-to right here, my remote, goggles and finally my battery. So I'm just using a 450 milliamp. Yeah let's go try it out and let's see how it goes. <laughs> you lately all i seem to do this boy has got me crazy yeah you got me stressing a little obsessive i can see it through you got me stressing but you know just what you do
upgrades and the camera mount. While you won't be shooting any production stuff with this, it's great for your own personal use that can shoot cinematic stuff. Stuff you want to post on YouTube, just showing the capabilities of what you can do with a micro drone. So let's go into the pros and cons. Some pros, it's a relatively easy swap. If you take into account how the orientation of the wires were, you don't have to play around with Betaflight or BL Heli. It generates tons of lift for its size. If you fly without the camera and leave the mount on, it's still a rocket. You can lift a bigger battery. Uh, this is small and discreet. It's easy to match the run cam with the HD camera. So you'll always be at the same angle. Because this is slightly heavier, it's actually more controllable, especially at low speed. So there's some cons actually that go along with this upgrade. One is finding the right motor that fits the mount. You may need to drill out the holes so it can fit. So you also might need some additional hardware like these spacers. Because of the way the camera is mounted onto the drone, there's a relatively long leverage arm. So if you crash, it's gonna change the FPV camera angle and also the HD camera. If you crash and then you fly back, you might be actually at a higher angle that you might not be used to. This upgrade may or may not fry your board. I have had no problems with it so far. But do keep in mind, you might be hitting the upper limit at full throttle. When you mount this, you will notice some jello from the get-go. It's usable from the start, but there's some workarounds that you can do. And the final con is because these are on a spacer, I don't think it's as robust as if you were to mount this directly onto the frame itself. There are some cracks that formed in place. Some recommendations if I was to do this mod again. One is to either cut or redesign the canopy here. Use a slightly larger battery, like a 650. It'll be more stable than the 450. If you're looking for smoother footage, I'll either lower your rates or increase expo. You'll notice there was some jello in the footage. I'd recommend doing some pit tuning. You can also reduce the jello by adding ND filters on there. I think the Insta360 Studio stabilization works really well. Again, if you're doing this for general purpose use, I think it works just fine. I would look into swapping out both the VTX on the RX so you can increase your range. Again, this is a micro configuration and you're getting about five minutes of flight time. So I don't think you really want to go that far. I, I think the stock props are great for a little bit more oomph. Uh, I recommend these Avon, Emacs Avon props. And if you're worried about the your ESCs burning up because of this configuration, Maybe set a throttle cap or a scale your throttle to 95%. And finally, swap to a props out configuration. And when you hit something, you're not actually going to get caught up in a tree. Would I recommend this, these modifications? And I'm going to say yes. As a new, you might be intimidated, but also uh, keep in mind that every single crash, every single thing that you break is a learning opportunity. With that being said, thank you guys for tuning in. Hit the like button if you guys like this episode. Until next time, fly safe, be safe. Bye. Like the BGs walking on the street, we staying alive. No, we ain't never sleep. Still, we living out these sweet dreams. Hit another beat, please play it aloud. The crowd saying, Well, you're rhythmic. Tell me, are you with me? Teaming like a split screen, we've been around. Get you on the dance floor. What you making plans for? You ain't got an answer. Let it all out. I see you even with my eyes closed.